Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the uh, heat pump conference. Uh, I am Xu Dong Wang with Air Conditioning, Heating and Refrigeration Institute. Uh, my topic today is about refrigerant transition. So when talking about the use of refrigerants, what would be some key factors that pop into your head? Is it uh, performance? and how well the refrigerant is going to perform in the system or the safety uh, or uh, its compatibility um, uh, with lubricant or other materials in your system or maybe all of them. It's actually a lot more than that. Uh, we will have to also consider regulations, codes and the standards uh, refrigerant trends and educations for technicians and the stakeholders. So I will briefly touch on the U.S. industry's effort related to some of these uh, key items in my presentation today. So before I start uh, the presentation, just a little bit introduction about who we are and what we do. Uh, the Air Conditioning, Heating and the Refrigeration Institute uh, is a trade association representing HVACR and the water heating equipment manufacturers. Uh, if we look at the buildings, um, basically our members' products are almost in every house, hotel, uh, apartment, uh, retail and office buildings. Our 300 plus member companies manufacture residential and commercial air conditioning, space heating, water heating, and the commercial refrigeration equipment and the components. So their products account for more than 90% of uh, equipment uh, manufactured and sold in North America. Uh, we, um, we represent our industry both uh, domestically and abroad. We also develop industry recognized performance standards for our equipment uh, and have a certification program and that is relied heavily upon by regulators for products performance readings. So um, if you attend this conference and are in this trade, I bet you heard a lot about this buzzword, uh, low global warming potential refrigerant. And uh, indeed, the, the global HVACR industry is transitioning to uh, low GWP refrigerants for the environmental and the regulatory concerns. And uh, you know, the, the Kigali Amendment under the uh, Montreal Protocol calls for uh, HFC phase down uh, with specific schedules for different regions of the world. Uh, under the uh, amendment, uh, developed countries will reduce HFC consumption beginning in 2019 and uh, then gradually reducing uh, their HFC reuse by 85% uh, by uh, 2036. In the US, um, the, the COVID-19 relief package was signed into law in 2020. It includes uh, the American Inno Innovation and the Manufacturing Act, uh, the AIM Act. The AIM Act uh, provides the uh, US Environment Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, uh, with the authority to face down the use of HFCs under the, uh, the same schedule as in the Kigali Amendment. The U.S. industry is working with EPA, environmental advocates, and other industry allies to establish national transition days for all refrigerant sectors. Our industry proposes to require uh, residential and uh, light commercial air conditioners to use refrigerants with GWP of 750, uh, 750 or less for new stationary uh, AC equipment manufactured after January 1, 2025. For variable refrigerant flow equipment, 
we propose that refrigerants be uh, limited to uh, 750 GWP for equipment manufactured after January 1, 2026. And uh, uh, proposals for other sectors are uh, in progress right now. So looking back, our industry uh, actually started to look into low GWP refrigerants more than a decade ago. At that time, there were so many op potential options when it comes to refrigerants. It is not really possible for a single company to evaluate them all. It's just not an e efficient way to use the resource. So AHRI took the leadership role along with our members to launch, in, uh, launch an uh, industry-wide cooperative research program called, called the Low GWP Refrigerants Evaluation Program. The goal was to identify and evaluate promising alternative refrigerants for major air conditioning and the refrigeration products. Um, the the program was highly supported by the industry. We assessed more than 60 low GWP options and produced around 70 test reports. Uh, several promising refrigerants that you often hear now were identified and evaluated back then in the program. <clears throat> At the end of the program, uh, the general conclusion was that and the low GWP refrigerants do exist, but there is a caveat. Many of these low GWP refrigerants are blends and have uh, A2L classification, um, having a lower flammability according, according to the uh, ASHRAE standard of 34. So after we concluded uh, the low GWP alternative refrigerants evaluation program. Um, new refrigerants continue to roll out. You can see from this slide that ASHRAE standard 34 approved 38 new refrigerant designations in the past five years. That is a lot, but it is pretty clear that a majority of them are blends consist of, consisting of two or more components Many of them are flammable and have a temperature glide. This creates an extra layer that manufacturers have to deal with when designing the next generation of products. So um, the refrigerant flammability uh, really creates a novel challenges, not only for the equipment, but also for the entire supply chain. Our industry has been focusing on identifying barriers and address them to achieve our goal of meeting face down commitments. Uh, initially, we con conducted extensive flammable refrigerants research to fill in the knowledge gaps. Uh, then we formed the safety, uh, Safe Refrigerant Transition Task Force uh, to address every step of the supply chain in the safe refrigerant transition, such as refrigerant uh, transportation and storage, uh, technician and fire services training, etc. So uh, through this process, you know, now uh, we we identified the, the current barrier of implementing low GWP refrigerants in the U.S. Uh, is the building codes adoption of the use of flammable refrigerants. The current building and the fire codes just do not allow these uh, flammable refrigerants to be practically used in homes and buildings. So um, in the United States, uh, there are several uh, critical steps needed to use a flammable refrigerants uh, in the field. Uh, first, a new refrigerant must seek a proper classification um, Per, per according uh, according to uh, ASHRAE standard 34. Uh, once it has its safety classification, and it, it will need the approval of the U U.S. Environmental Protection Agency uh, significant new alternatives policy program, I'm called a SNAP program, uh, for each application in which the refrigerant will be used. Uh, the SNAP approval uh, 
um, process uh, requires that the refrigerant uh, must meet all safety requirements from ASHRAE, uh, uh, from ASHRAE standard 15 and uh, that the equipment using these requirements meet all requirements um, meet all requirements of relevant uh, safety standards, such as the UL standards. So uh, depending on the version of uh, these standards, they must be adopted by a model building codes, which must finally be adopted by the state and the local authorities. So this is a very long process and uh, you know, the code adoption process uh, takes a long time. Um, you know, um, some stakeholders are uh, ready uh, for the, uh, uh, the transition, but some may not be. So there is a significantly, uh, significant commercial conflict, uh, which may make the, uh, you know, the uh, code hearing process very difficult. And uh, even we pass the national uh, model codes ad adoption and uh, model codes are then typically adopted locally, often with three to 12 year delays because of the approval process uh, in each state and the jurisdiction and, and also the buy-ins from all the stakeholders there. So um, yeah, it's a very long process and take a lot of time and effort. So speaking of uh, standards, uh, there are uh, two types of standards. Um, one is general standard and then the other is product specific standard. And this table listed the key standards in the US and uh, their equivalent ones in Canada, Europe and other regions that are in, in, around the world. Uh, in the US, the ASHRAE standard 15 specifies a safe design, construction, um, installation, and the operation of um, refrigeration systems. And the standard establishes appropriate uh, restrictions and the requirements for any combination of building types, uh, product types, and the refrigeration, uh, refrigerant classifications. Uh, the, the product standard for air conditioning equipment is UL 60335-2-40 and for refrigeration products is uh, 60335-2-89. They basically set necessary requirements to make sure uh, the products using low GWP refrigerants are safe. Uh, such as refrigerant charge limit and the safe, safety features, etc. So, in order to use flammable refrigerants, these standards must be adopted. This requires a scientific uh, must be sorry must be updated, and uh, and and so this requires uh, scientific and technical evidence to uh, support necessary changes. So the industry has to spend a tremendous resource to identify the knowledge gaps, uh, understand and address the refrigerant flammability issues by carrying out essential research to support the standard revisions. So uh, AHI has been leading a, a research program to generate publicly available and sound technical uh, data to support standard and code revisions related to the use of uh, flammable refrigerants. Uh, this this multi-million dollars program was jointly funded by AHRI, ASHRAE, uh, California Air Resource Board and uh, US Department of Energy. We have completed many projects to understand the potential risks and the means to mitigate them. And we, are, we, we have also learned the conditions that could potentially cause flammable refrigerants to ignite and what it would look like once they were ignited. Uh, those, uh, these lessons learned helped the industry and the standard bodies to set proper requirements to prevent these things uh, from happening at the first place. So a big portion of a research effort is to conduct a refrigerant leak and the ignition testing under uh, the whole room condition to understand the A2L and A3 refrigerants potential ignition and the event severity 
for different different types of uh, air conditioner and air conditioning and the refrigeration products. The testing investigated how key variables influence the, the results, such as ambient conditions, refrigerant release quantity, uh, release height, etc. This slide shows an example of packaged terminal air conditioner testing for R452B, an A2L refrigerant, and R290, an A3 refrigerant. Our contractor built a mock-up full-scale uh, motel room with a PTAC installed, a uh, packaged terminal air conditioner installed. Uh, during the test, the refrigerant in liquid phase was released into test room, simulating a system leak with several uh, viable ignition sources present. Uh, refrigerant release quantities were uh, chosen according to the latest UL standard. The test results demonstrated that uh, you know the A3 refrigerant was easier to be ignited, and the ignition event were more severe. Uh, compared to A2L refrigerant. Um, this slide is not a vision test, uh, to be clear. I, I just want to show you a portion of the research that has been carried out. Our industry has invested a lot to learn how to safely address uh, the flammability issue by testing, uh, modeling, uh, studying refrigerant uh, detection and uh, and how to properly servicing equipment. All these results were uh, fed into a uh, standard revision process. Uh, by the way, all those uh, projects reports, you can find it online at the AHRI website and some are, are at the uh, ASHRAE website. So learning from extensive research activities for the past a few years, the industry has much better understanding of the flammable refrigerant ignition risk and the severity and the worst case scenarios that are unlikely to happen in the real world. Uh, safety standards have been or are being updated as more research results are available. Now the industry uh, uh, is in the process of developing training materials and guidelines. You know, um, at the present, the updated safety standards included many requirements to ensure the safe use of flammable refrigerants. Uh, using a residential ducted system as an example, uh, these key requirements uh, in the UL standard uh, 6035-2-40 uh, include um, some of the safety features like uh, uh, isolate, uh, competent ignition sources from flammable refrigerants um, by removing ignition sources inside the duct and the unit um, and or and the limit refrigerant charge level uh, to reduce the, the, the ignition risk um, protect protect the piping from accidental uh, damage um, to avoid the refrigerant uh, leak um, uh, with proper labeling uh, product with, um, uh, with warning signs, uh, install refrigerant uh, uh, detectors in all units above uh, a certain charge level, uh, active mitigation uh, using air circulation and the dilu uh, dilutions, um, set minimum occupied area combined with charge limits, uh, require uh, service training and education um, um, of uh, technicians. So all, all in all, the fundamental approach is really to prevent refrigerant ignition at the first place. Um, you know, uh, to get flammable refrigerants adopted by uh, code, another key industry action is to engage with stakeholders for uh, transferring the knowledge uh, learned by the industry and provide them with necessary education, educational information. Um, the AHRI Safe Refrigerant Transition Task Force has been uh, actively working with stakeholders, uh, including contractors, uh, government agencies, the fire service, unions, training organizations, and other business. Many of their representatives participate in uh, the task force activities. 
So alongside of the safety aspect of a low GWP refrigerants, AHI's research arm Marty is currently uh, leading a research program on developing essential low GWP refrigerant database. The program brings together expertise from Oak Ridge National Lab, uh, National Institute of Standards and the Technology, and the U.S. industry. The Oak Ridge is developing the heat transfer and the pressure drop correlations uh, for new refrigerants. Uh, NIST uh, is measuring and modeling low GWP refrigerant blends thermophysical property data. Uh, the, the data will be implemented into the NIST Refprop database. AHRTI is carrying out low GWP refrigerants material compatibility and the lubricant research. So the combined data from the three components of the program uh, will um, really provide U.S. manufacturers with accurate refrigerant data and build a foundation for manufacturers to design and optimize more efficient and reliable products. So um, all in all, the, the, the world is transitioning to a low GWP refrigerant and our industry is getting ready for an orderly face down of HFCs. Extensive research on refrigerant flammability has been completed. Um, uh, HRI Safe Refrigerant Transition Task Force is working to help ensure a safe North, safe North, North American transition to uh, low GWP refrigerants. Uh, the training materials are already available um, uh, from some manufacturers in the US um, and also the more accurate property data is being generated for uh, next generation of equipment using uh, low GWP refrigerants. Well, thank you uh, for your attention. Uh, please contact me for uh, comments and questions and check out AHI website for uh, these project reports. Thank you.